Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start this uh, analysis by a question. From whenever, wherever you are watching this video, um, of course, anywhere, can you help me answer a question? What is the kind of the president of your host country? Yes, if it is US, what is the kind of your president? Uh, even here in Africa, those who are watching from Tanzania, Uganda, I think Uganda is known, Somalia, what is the kind of your president? That question maybe you may not answer it finally, but of course in this analysis, we are going to look at something. There is an interesting article. Um, I bumped on this article just today. Is Africa's praying presidents and the prospects of war or peace in DRC Congo? And the writer spoke about very interesting things about praying president. I need to mention that praying is personal. It's a personal decision. And in Kenya, you have right to worship. Of course, it's protected in the Constitution. What is the prospect of East Africans it's Africa's praying presidents. <laughs> praying, are they likely to pray on the people? And does it really, what is the impact of that, the quest for democracy? Yes, it's a very broad topic, but I try to narrow down to something very interesting. So, in this country today, President Ruto spoke about an, a, a target that he gave KRA to increase tax collection from 14% to 25%. It's also good uh, to appreciate KRA. They surpassed their target last financial year. While the issue of public display of uh, your religion is not something that is new, then to the tip Arab Moe, was frequently pictured in church on the front uh, with hymn books, Bible in one hand and the famous Rungu in the other hand, singing the glory of God in his uh, gruff voice, the respective symbols of power, raw power, though clearly seen. And many did not appear to bother. So at the end of it, the 24-year tenure, Moi was the autobiography of my Moi was written. Moi's tenure was written as that who also um, occasioned torture and violation of human rights, despite the fact that he was a public man with the Bible. President Ruto has taken that his footsteps. And I'm saying his footstep because even former President Hulu Benyata was a Catholic, but rarely, was rarely seen, and also had close ties with the Corino. And President Trudeau, after successfully using the clergy as part of his campaign platform, that euphoria seems to have been taken, continued to be taken in government. Even It even started during the inauguration. When sending a contingent of KDF uh, troops for peacekeeping mission, in DRC, he came out praying for the soldiers. The writer of my article was saying that um, it's good to pray for God's speed for the uniformed forces. But of course, that prayer also needs to be extended. He was making that. It needs to be extended to the DRC leaders for them to agree to a negotiation because they are the custodian of peace, because they're the people that are creating the war. So uh, the writer was saying that, of course, maybe that was not done in public, but perhaps somewhere, uh, maybe in his room, or when talking to the generals, he also prayed that leaders from that area, uh, from that region, embraced dialogue, praying for them. In public, in, in, in cabinet meetings, uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, when Salim Dabadi announced that um, there is no cabinet meeting that will be held before a prayer, fine, of course. And we've seen meetings 
uh, cabinet meetings, starting with prayers. <laughs> Very good. And of course, I'm, I'm, I've always said something that you can doubt President Ruto on anything, but I think his attachment with God somehow is special. He's the only one who knows. Many will criticize him for other reasons. But on this one, I, I you know, I remember there is a video at, at during campaign period where he even broke down. Yes, personally, I am intercessor, so may I get, I get to understand more on that. He has a way of expressing himself. And despite the quote of the presidency, when it comes to his relationship with God, he, said, he makes it let go. Now, before I tell you on the irony behind all this, I need to take you through a tour of East African presidents a bit. And let's start with Burundi. Pierre Nkurunziza, late Nkurunziza, was known for his passion for sports and prayer. And often he would, you see him, photos of him playing football and praying or even at some public event. But on the other end, he was ruthless when it came to politics. When things did not go his way or when he thought his rule was threatened, he turned. Not to prayer and God, but to a viciousness in dealing with the perceived threat. Remember, um, in, in, in Burundi, there was, um, there was this, these two, two students, some, some young schoolgirls, who were in Chora. And they had to be arrested, by the way. You know that the state arrested and it really became a big issue. It was covered all over by the newspaper. So that is the president. Some people have always uh, trivialized his uh, management of COVID that was allegedly rumored to have taken his life on platform that he ever believed. He actually believed that. That is not, he's one person who never believed. So his, his management of COVID was a bit criticized, even in the African East African front, because he believed that it could be treated by God. I want to get to Tanzania. Because he's a very staunch Catholic and did not really fear to show his religion in public, he still believed in he still believed in efficacy of prayer. Could not even one of the COVID-19. He's also among people who believed that through prayers, COVID-19 could come to an end, could be healed. Yes, and I'm not trying to trivialize those because they are the late. In Seychelles, Wavel Ram Kapawal is also an Anglican bishop. Apart from praying, apart from praying for security, and also praying for the attractiveness of the islands, but also praying for uh, tourists to visit the area. Malayan President Lazarus Shakura. So, it's not something I was giving you. I was taking a tour of the African stage, African country, so that you see that what is happening with President Ruto is not something new. However, the public need to really understand and not to confuse this with sympathy. Not to confuse your president with your pledge. In fact, with the praying presidents, they tend to have what is called populism. They attract populism, and this populism can cover, can, can stop the general public from making a very objective judgment of these leaders, even of their track records. They are in church every day. They are with you. And everything, of course, African culture, had also the diviners. So it's not something that is new. It was there. But you should not confuse this that you can't ask the questions that really need to be asked. That's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that that aspect of being playing, it's being played in public and people tend to think, okay, that's how. No. You need to know that there is a difference between religion and political power. It's a big difference. If you have been following my uh, tour of the African presidents, the praying presidents, 
from my article. The writer says that however religion becomes a unitive umbrella for unity, sometimes it doesn't really translate to democracy. Yes, Burundi have had their problems. It doesn't really mean that, okay, we have a plain president, everything is fine, he's so fine into matters democracy, he wants, no, that is what the writer is saying. But when you hear the talks of we can change the constitution and tomorrow we're not going to do that, you don't take it for granted. You don't get covered that we have a plain president. I listened to a trade cabinet secretary and it's for disheartening Moses Kuria coming out in public to say that, look here, we have many other ways there are many things killing Kenyans and people in Kenya, and if GMO is one of them, we are bringing it to kill you. You know, it doesn't. And someone was trivializing, saying that look here, maybe we also need to pray. <laughs> we need to pray, and Kenyans need to understand that often some are ruthless, and so it's a very strong warning to those who are on the other side of the law, and of course the gays that have been mugging and robbing Kenyans in the streets. Don't get confused uh, that, oh, we have a plain president, so uh, there's a lot of sympathy and a lot of... Oh, no, 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 no. There's no forgiveness. President Ruto can be very ruthless. Can be very ruthless in dealing with the robbers. This message goes to the bandits. Don't confuse. Because it's not the first time. I don't know what you think. What's your stake on this point? It's a very interesting analysis I checked. And I just like the fact that um, there is, Kenyans need to make a distinction. I've seen president, we have a president that is going to church every Sunday. Every, no, no, not going to church, but holding church rallies every Sunday. I need to don't get that difference. Don't get it political and of course it's for political visibility and all that so let's get that's my bold let's meet in the next